morning to you all. Hi, my name is Vinay Nangia and I'm a senior agricultural hydrologist at an organization called International Center for Agricultural Research in the Dry Areas. Uh, I belong here, I'm presenting a practice called Supplemental Irrigation, which is a promising climate smart agriculture practice, especially for dry areas where rainfalls are typically lower than the crop water demand. A uh, little bit of introduction to dryland agriculture for those of you who are not familiar. Around 80% of the world agricultural land is rain fed and it contributes to two thirds of the global food production. So it's really important landscape for food security. And also about 41% of the earth's land is classified as dry lands. These areas are where the rainfall is between 300 and 500 millimeters and which typically come during the winter and the springtime. So it's very difficult to use this water beneficially for, for, for crop growth. Uh, the low rainfall, which is not only insufficient, but irregular, it constitutes a major challenge for profitable farming. So there's a mismatch between crop water demand and when the rainfall occurs. Uh, nevertheless, there's local population that depends on these lands for producing food. And about 2 billion people worldwide live in the dry lands. So it's really important for them to earn a livelihood using these landscapes. Uh, so after moving, after going through the, the, the introduction to rainfed agriculture, let's look at the definition of supplemental irrigation. It's the addition of limited amount of water to essentially rain-fed crops in order to improve and stabilize yields during times when rainfall fails to provide sufficient moisture for normal plant growth. There's so many keywords here, so let's go through the principle of supplemental irrigation that we find in this definition. Firstly, water is applied to a rain-fed crop that would normally produce some yield without irrigation. So we're talking about rain-fed agriculture, but we are only applying this a limited amount of water to normally rain-fed yields. Secondly, the, since rainfall is the principal source of water for rain-fed crops, supplemental irrigation is applied when rain fails to provide essential moisture. So we are talking about times when the rainfall is less than normal, less than the crop water demand. And this helps improve and stabilize production. And finally, the amount and timing of supplemental irrigation is optimally scheduled not to provide moisture-free conditions throughout the growing season. So we're not trying to meet the crop water demand here. We're not trying to refill to field capacity, but rather to ensure that a minimum amount of water is available during the critical stages of growth that would permit optimal yield. So we are just applying certain small amounts of doses of water during the critical stages, which are very sensitive, sensitive to stress to have optimum yields. So these are very important keywords and important principles of supplemental irrigation to understand, then only we can move forward. Now, next thing is, I've seen so many questions being raised about when to irrigate, how much to irrigate, what's the benefit, is it worth investing, the cost involved, and things like that. So let's go through when to irrigate. The first thing that you can benefit from supplemental irrigation is early sowing. What we see in the dry areas is the rainfall comes late, is in insufficient amounts and farmer keeps waiting. So if you can apply a small dose of supplemental irrigation before planting, then you can do an early sowing. Early sowing helps early maturity and you can avoid the heat at the end of the growing season. Uh, what we have seen from our research is that if you apply one dose of supplemental irrigation, say in Iran, we increase the wheat yields from 2.4 to 3.8 tons per hectare. In Turkey, we found that wheat, wheat yields could be increased from 3.1 ton per hectare to 5.3 tons per hectare by doing an early sowing using supplemental irrigation. Next reason why supplemental irrigation can help mitigate uh, climate change effect is to alleviate moisture stress. Sometimes the rainfall pattern is such that you have too much of rainfall and then it stops and then it comes too late. So to alleviate this moisture stress when the rainfall is interrupted during the rainy season, it helps to have supplemental irrigation. So you have critical growth stages when you can apply a small amount of water to overcome the stress and you can see big improvements in your yields. What we have seen in Syria is by just applying 50 millimeters of supplemental irrigation, we could increase the wheat yields by one ton per hectare. So supplemental irrigation can help alleviate moisture stress during the growing season. Um, next thing, 
how to irrigate? These are very important questions because there's cost involved and there are different barriers which, which prevent a, a adoption of supplemental irrigation. First is the source of water. We don't want to use a source of water that is not sustainable, that is not renewable. So a source of water should be such that it's a running water, it's, it's harvested water, some source of water that can be renewable. Second thing is the choice of irrigation system. We don't want to be investing in something that is too ex expensive, too modern, too sophisticated, but won't be used all the time. So the choice of system becomes important and most important, the source of energy. If you don't have source of energy, how do you push th this water through the system? But lately, solar power, drip irrigation, sprinkler irrigation systems are coming, but they have costs involved. So we have to take into account the source of energy when you pr uh, promise uh, to install supplemental irrigation for a farmer. Next is the benefit involved. These are the cost when and how much to irrigate. What are the benefits? Well, when you look at the climate change, it's a higher and more stable yield against erratic rainfall, against high temperatures. So supplemental irrigation benefits you in that way. Secondly, lower risk of crop failure. If it's a dry year, you benefit because your crop won't fail uh, compared to the farmer who is not using supplemental irrigation. Thirdly, and most importantly, it's significantly higher water productivity. Like we all know in dry areas where water is the limiting factor of production, it's a water productivity that needs to be ma maximized, not the land productivity. So we're trying to grow maximum biomass per unit of water. We're trying to maximize the kilograms per unit of water here using supplemental irrigation. Um, some of the challenges, some of the things that to keep in mind when we talk about supplemental irrigation, firstly, is the soil texture. The soil texture should be such that it should not have very high clay content or very high sand content. And the water that's being applied, the rate should match with the, water, the hydraulic conductivity of the soil. Otherwise, the water won't infiltrate and you will lose as a surface is a runoff. Uh, second thing to keep in mind is the choice of crop and management practices. What are you trying to grow? Is it worth it? Do you want to grow really wheat and barley using supplemental irrigation, using such expensive, precious water? Or do you want to grow cash crops and make more money with it? And water alone doesn't help. The other management practices such as fertilizer application rate, land preparation, choice of seed, choice of cultivar, all those go, go hand in hand to maximize the yield and overcome climate change effects. Next thing is the landscape. It should be flat such that the water be, is able to reach every corner of the field and not just get stagnated in the low areas. Next thing is the reservoir capacity. You have to have a source of water such that you have enough water stored to meet the demand. If you have too little or too much, either it becomes too expensive or the water is insufficient and you don't benefit from the application of water. So reservoir capacity is important because there's a cost involved and you're trying to meet a certain demand. If you don't, then it, it's a waste of investment. Next thing is the depth and timing of application. It's so important to apply the right amount at the right time. And the farmer who is not very experienced always faces this challenge. How much do I apply? When do I apply? And extension services become important here. You need to provide some guidance. Which stays is critical. When do you apply? How much do you apply such that it helps a farmer? And plug the non-beneficial losses, of course. You don't want to be losing water as evaporation or bleach seepage and, and, and be wasting that precious water. Now, going through, I have seen some, some questions asking, what is water harvesting? And why do you do, like, water harvesting is really important in dry areas because rainfall happens during winter time. You want to store that water to be used beneficially at a later stage. And what this diagram shows you are the three components. There's a catchment, there's a storage, and there's a target. And what you see in this picture is the catchment is much bigger than the target. So we're trying to capture all the runoff all the rainfall that's happening in the catchment, which, which is collected as runoff into a storage structure and is used in a smaller target area. So if you have 200 millimeter rainfall happening in a bigger area, concentrated in a smaller area, it can become 400, 500, 600 millimeters of water and can help in irrigating that smaller area. This is a really important criteria, important distinction and important components that we need to have in a water harvesting structure.
Here are the six steps we followed in a project we did in northern Iraq and Kurdistan area. We have this area in step one where you see steep sloped lands. We collected the runoff from there. We, we excavated a reservoir. We made it lined. We collected the water. And then we stored that water till it became too dry. The rain, rainy season was over. Then using moving sprinklers, we applied this water as 100 and 200 millimeters of rainfall in two uh, treatments and what we saw was tremendous improvement in crop yields. So here are some results from this. So we had three treatments, 100, 200 millimeters of rainfall compared with the rain fed. And what you see here is plot A, which is uh, 200 millimeter rainfall had three tons per hectare compared with plot B, which received 100 millimeters and had 1.43 versus rain fed, which had only 0.75 tons per hectare yields. So we had significantly increased yields. The yields increased by as much as 91% with 100%, 100 millimeters of rainfall uh, of supplemental irrigation application and a further 112 percent increase was witnessed when we moved from 100 millimeters to 200 millimeters of rain for, uh, of supplemental irrigation and also we saw a significant increase in the supplemental irrigation uh, sorry uh, significant increase in the water productivity through the application of supplemental irrigation um, so we could grow more crop per drop of water uh, we have record uh, we have run uh, climate change scenarios for Syria recently. And what we have found that we did this uh, model downscaling of SRESA2 model. And we ran the period of 2070 to 2100. And what we saw was if it's purely rain fed agriculture, the wheat yields will decrease by on average 10% as compared to the historic conditions of 1980 to 2010. And also the yield of straw, which is important source of livestock for livestock feeding in this region will drop by 23%. And year-to-year -year variability of agricultural production will also be neg negatively affecting. And simulation revealed that the percentage of years with yields below 0.5 tons per hectare will also increase from historically 13% to 27%. And if you if you introduce supplemental irrigation under these conditions, what we have found that supplemental irrigation of, of just on average 122 millimeters can help increase yields by 2.6 times compared to rain-fed agriculture. And also the water productivity will increase from 0.5 kilograms per meter cube of water to 0.99. And as rainfall is unpredictable, supplemental irrigation more, becomes more viable uh, practice to alleviate moisture stress caused by increased temperature, erraticness of, of the, the rainfall. So you have too much of runoff happening, which can be captured and can be used for supplemental irrigation. Supplemental irrigation can help adapt to climate change. With supplemental irrigation, early planting is possible, like I said before, and the growing season can start relatively early. Um, so I just want to conclude by saying, yes, supplemental irrigation is a climate smart agriculture practice. It can, it can help adapt to climate change. If you use solar power drip irrigation system, it can help mitigation also. And supplemental irrigation alone, although it alleviates soil moisture stress, cannot help uh, overcome all the problems. It has to be, um, it has to be combined with better land preparation, fertility and pest management, and choice of right crop varieties for the location and the climate. The supplemental irrigation is many one of many things that has to come together to become a silver bullet to fight uh, climate change problems in the dry areas of the world. With that, I will stop talking. Thank you so much, and let's open for discussion and question and answers.